What's happening guys? Today we're going to be jumping into Adobe Illustrator and doing a little bit of a tutorial that's easy enough that anybody can do it. And what we're going to be doing is recreating an existing logo from scratch that wasn't in a vector format and making it into a vector format. Let me show you what I mean. So first let's quickly open up a new document in Illustrator. This one's 15 by 15 inches. The size of it really doesn't make a difference. As long as it's 300 PPI and CMYK mode, you're good to go. And let's drop our artwork down on here. This was brought into me by a recent print client. This is not something that we designed here, but they did not have a vector version of this graphic. Now, right away when I look at this thing, I can tell that it probably started its life as a vector graphic at some point, and then somewhere along the lines, it got downgraded to a JPEG or a PNG or something like that. And then somebody took it and either image traced it within Illustrator or plugged it into one of those quickly vector something websites that are just image trace outside of Illustrator and then took that and converted it down to a PNG again and now we're here. And how I can tell that is if we zoom in on this thing, you can see none of these lines are straight anymore. They're all kind of wonky looking. You can see the U has some weird stuff going on in there. There's some jagged stuff hanging off the bottom. If we go to the top of it, there's some jagged stuff there. You can see that this corner has been rounded off. There's this line's not straight anymore. Basically, you look all over this whole logo, it basically falls apart. There's not a straight line left on it. And that's what the image trace function or those websites essentially do to graphics of any kind. They will round off corners. They will add corners when things are supposed to be round. Lines won't be straight anymore. It just, they always do a terrible job. I have never once seen either of those functions do what they are supposed to do properly. But believe it or not, a lot of shops will call this acceptable and print it as it is or they will hit it with image trace again and make it even worse. And let's, let's just do that real quick. So let's just select this thing real quick and hit image trace fast. I'm not gonna even adjust any of the parameters because we're never gonna use that in here. But you can see that here's a perfect example. This is a nice straight line up against it and you can see it is all bowed off. Um, if we go up here, you can see this corner is now gone. Some of those lines got even worse. Uh, yeah, basically, it just ruins this thing. Every time you hit it with image trace, it's gonna make it worse and worse and worse. And it really bothers me that I see so much of this stuff out there. It happens all the time. And believe it or not, a lot of these places will charge extra for clicking that one button and just basically turning your logo into a piece of crap. When really, if you have a couple basic skills and wanna produce quality work, a lot of logos out there are very easy to recreate with simple basic shapes and text. And this thing is a perfect example of that. So we're gonna recreate this thing real quick and do it right because that's what we do around here. Now, quickly before I start, if you want a bit of a rundown on some of these basic tools that we're gonna be using today, click this thing right here and go check out my making registration marks tutorial because I kind of go a little bit deeper on what these little functions do. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is place your JPEG, PNG, whatever it is down on your artboard. This is something clearly that we've already done. So we're gonna select it and go down here to the layers panel and double click the little square image of it. That's gonna bring up our layer options and click on template and okay and what that's going to do is lock the image down so we can work over top of it and it also kind of dims it a little bit so if you had to move it over top of something that you can see through it and after you're done that go down here and add a new layer up over top of it the next thing you want to do is go to your upper menu and select view make sure your smart guides are turned on and if you choose snap to point now this is something that sometimes i use sometimes i don't in this case, we're gonna use it because this is a very simple graphic and it's actually gonna speed us up a little bit. So I'm gonna use it. Now, before I start, I'm gonna add a couple guides to this thing just to make sure uh, things are lined up when I'm building over top of it. So we're gonna hit Command R and that's gonna bring up our rulers and you can just grab the top or side ruler, uh, click down and drag down a guide. So we're gonna take this one and add that right to the top of that U. Yeah, that's good enough if you ask me. And we're gonna go and add another one down to the bottom of it. Probably right about there. We're gonna add another one down to the bottom of the F. So that's good for the horizontal guides. And now I'm gonna grab a couple vertical guides. I'm gonna bring one into the edge of that F there. One there. And probably right there is good enough. Ah, you know what, one more over here too. Yeah, so now if we hide everything, you can already see we kind of got something here even though we actually didn't do anything, but you can tell that we've got a good starting point now to make a nice symmetrical logo. Now this is how easy it is. To remake this thing, we're literally gonna use two different kinds of rectangles and two circles. Because if you check this thing out, like rectangle shape, rectangle shape, rectangle shape, and then the bottom of the U here, that's our circle shape. So I'm gonna bring my toolbars back and hit the M key, or we're gonna just go over here and click this rectangle tool, you can do that too and zoom in on this thing and find the edge of it right 
there. We're just gonna give ourselves a rectangle. Just make sure you're getting the same width. The, the height of it doesn't matter at this point. Well, I should probably add a fill to that, so we're gonna go ahead and do a bright color for now so we can see if there's any of this gray poking out around the edges. Now we're just gonna zoom in and start adjusting that thing. And first thing I see is that guide was a little bit off, so I'm gonna grab that guide and bring it out to the edge here. And now grab a rectangle and do the same with that. So click on that. Perfect. And on this side, we are good to go. Height looks good. So this is our starting point, And this one rectangle will build like 80% of this logo because you can see there's the same line thickness going on throughout most of the F and the U. And we're just gonna take this rectangle and just repeat it a bunch of times and move it around and resize it as we need. So let's finish off the F here. We're gonna grab this, hit option, click, drag it over, grab another one of them. And we're gonna hit shift and rotate it. Boom. And now we are gonna line it up with this top edge. So now those two are nicely locked together and take that, drag it out, boom. And let's go ahead and do that again for the bottom half of the F. We're gonna hit option, click, drag it down. We're gonna hold shift this time so that it drags in a nice straight line. We're gonna drag it right to there. That looks perfect. So now we're gonna make this lower point. We're gonna zoom in on this thing here and you can actually see the guide is a little bit off. So we're gonna just grab that thing and drag it down to where I think it should be. That looks good to me. And we're gonna adjust the rectangle to the same spot. And now we are gonna hit the A key and bring up our direct selection tool. And we're gonna click on that one point there. And we're gonna hold shift and drag that thing down right down to our other guide. So now let's make the horizontal bars of the F real quick. I'm gonna bring back our rectangle tool, hit the M key. And we're gonna go right up close to this edge here. Gonna, yeah, that looks pretty good. We're just gonna bring that out to Let's just bring it out to there for now, just so we can kind of step back and take a look at it, make sure it looks good. Yeah, that looks good to me. Cool, so now we can grab that thing and we're gonna bring that all the way out to the edge where we put that other guide and that guide is smack where it needs to be. So that's perfect. And now we're just gonna hit the V key again and we are gonna option, click, drag, hold shift down and we're gonna drag that one down right down to this bottom edge here. Uh, it's a little bit off, so bring that down one. There we go, that's perfect. And look at that, we've already built the F. That's just how easy this is. The U is gonna take a couple more steps, but really it's the same thing. So let's start on the U. We're gonna go back here, we're gonna grab this piece of the F here. We're gonna click Option and drag it over. And the reason that I keep selecting that same piece and using it over and over is so that we know that this whole thing is gonna be symmetrical across the board. And the smart guides will actually show us how symmetrical it is. We're, we'll grab the top of this thing and make it bigger than it needs to be and bring it back down. And you can see it actually locks it in with the top of that F. So we know this thing is dead square now. I'm gonna option click and drag this piece over now. We're gonna lock it to that guide. Um, that one looks pretty perfect. Yeah, I'm gonna call that perfect because you can see the weird stuff going on underneath it, so that's good. And we're gonna make these top points again, same deal. We're gonna select this thing, hit our direct selection tool, which is the A key, hit that thing, hold shift and drag it up so it locks down on that one guide that we made. And we're gonna do the same over here. Bam. So now we gotta start building the bottom half of the U and this is where a couple extra steps are gonna take place. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this thing, we're gonna drag this little bad boy down to like, I don't know, let's say there, let's give ourselves a little bit extra. We're gonna bring another one of these pieces over here. And the smart guide should lock us in nice and centered. There we go. We'll shorten it up a little bit. We're gonna give ourselves a little bit of extra overhang though. We're gonna trim that off later. Now we're gonna make ourselves a couple circles to finish off this U. So we're gonna go over here to this rectangle tool. We're gonna right click on it and bring up our ellipse tool. So let's go ahead and just make ourselves a circle. I'm just gonna hold shift and drag one out here. That's gonna make us a nice and even circle. I'm actually gonna make that thing a different color too so we can kind of see what we're doing. And I'm gonna take that circle and I'm gonna bring it up and line it up to doesn't matter which one of these edges, but as long as it's on one of the outer edges of the U. Now I'm just gonna go to one of the opposite corners. We're gonna pick this lower one here, hit shift again, and drag it out until it locks in with that outer guide that we made. So now we know this is the exact same width as that entire U. Next, we're just gonna click it. We're gonna hold shift so that we know we're going up and down in a perfectly straight line. We're not gonna throw it out of whack. And we are gonna bring it down to this bottom edge right there. Actually, our guide's a little bit off on that one again too, so I'm gonna take that guide and pull it up a little bit. I probably should have went through that first and <laughs> made those all nice and perfect before I started this, but whatever. 
There we go. All right, we're getting close. So the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take this circle and we're actually gonna duplicate it. So we're gonna hit Command C and then we're gonna hit Command F to paste it directly on top. And now we're gonna take that circle. We're gonna hold Shift and Option this time and we're gonna bring it in. It doesn't really matter at this point. Let's just bring it into like here and we're also gonna make this one a different color. Next thing I wanna do is I wanna click the blue circle. I'm gonna right click and go to arrange and send to back so that I can see these pink lines now. And now that I can see those, I'm gonna take my yellow circle again. We're gonna hit shift option and we are gonna drag that in until it locks in the center of those two pink bars. And now we know we've got a perfect U shape here now. So now it's time to turn it into a U shape. We'll select our yellow circle. We're gonna hold shift and select the blue circle with it and go over here to the right with the pathfinder and we're gonna hit the one that says minus front Boom, there we go. Now we've got that center punched out and we'll bring up our direct selection tool again with the A key. We're gonna hit this little point here and delete it. And we are gonna hit that little point and delete that. And now we've got our nice lower half of the U semicircle shape thingy. <laughs> Actually, since we're gonna use the pathfinder again, something you might wanna do is rejoin those edges because if we hit command Y, you can see that it's, it's an open shape now. It's not totally sealed off. So we're gonna make sure our direct selection tool and select these two points and hit Command J and that will join that up and make it its own solid shape. So we're gonna do the same thing over here, Command J. Now if we hit Command Y, we can see that that thing is a solid closed off shape. Cool, so we're almost done at this point. All we have left to do is to get in there and trim these little corners off the edges of the U, join everything together, and we're done. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna clear these guides off because we don't need them anymore and now they're really just in my way. So I'm gonna go up to View and Guides, clear those bad boys out of the way. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna select this whole thing again and we're gonna hit Option, Drag, we're gonna drag a working piece of it over there before we do any of the real finishing work. That way if anything happens or we have to make any adjustments or anything, we have a live working piece to go back to without having to start over at square one again. And this is actually a super good habit to get into if you're doing anything in Illustrator. I know if I'm designing anything in there, you will see a whole evolution of whatever that design is because I will be copying and dragging that thing every time I do anything significant. That way if I, kind of lose my way or if I decide to go another route, I always have something to go back to. But anyways, let's finish this damn thing. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go down and click our little blue semicircle here. We're gonna hit Command C on that just in case anything happens. Um, since we've got that selected, we're gonna hit Shift and we're gonna hit those two outer edges that have those corners on them. So now we've got these three pieces all selected and we're gonna go over here to the Pathfinder and hit the one that says Trim. And when you hit trim, it ends up kind of grouping everything together for whatever reason, it's really annoying. So we're just gonna hit shift, command and G and ungroup it. And now you can go and delete those little corners. And lastly, we're gonna zoom back out. We are gonna select this whole deal. So we've got every single piece. And now we're just gonna go back over to the Pathfinder and click on Unite. And now we have one solid shape. We're gonna go ahead and make that thing black the way that it should have been and bam, we are done. And actually, you know what, let's compare the two now. So I'm gonna unlock that bottom layer. I'm gonna get rid of the template function as well. So let's bring a copy of both of these things down here and see what they look like. So yeah, you can see a real big difference between these two now. You can see these ugly, gross, jagged lines and weird pixelated edges and stuff that if you would have printed this thing normally, it would have looked awful. Whereas now we've got a nice clean vector graphic beside it. Our client is gonna be 10 times more happy with what we made. And also I'm gonna be giving him this thing so that in future purposes, if he decides to go print somewhere else, if he doesn't need print with us again, I'm gonna give him this thing anyways so that he can take it somewhere else. And it just gives me peace of mind knowing that his logo is gonna be done right as long as he's handing over this piece of artwork. Going those little extra steps for your clients makes a difference, trust me. But that's just how easy it can be to recreate a lot of the more basic designs that you see out there. You can combine these skills that I taught you with some basic shapes some text, whatever, and combine them in different ways and come up with quite a bit of stuff and even use it to create your own design. But this is only the beginning. We're gonna slowly start working our way up towards some more advanced and intermediate level stuff and eventually some pro level stuff as the year goes on. So keep a lookout for that. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something today that you're gonna put to use in your own shops and your own workflow, whatever. And if you have any questions about any of the stuff that I covered in this video today, drop them down in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you. 
Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you again in the next one.